The Amiga 500 Mini is a micro console that's based off the original system that was made by Commodore in 1987 that was announced on the 10th of August 2021. Hey, that's my birthday. The A500 uses a H6ARM A53 processor, 512 megabytes of RAM, high definition, 256 megabyte flash drive, and retail for about 140 European dollars. The console itself is a replica of the original system, although the keyboard is not functional and is just for show. Get yourself one USB mouse, one USB CD 32-bit gamepad, and I do believe the unit is compatible with third-party controllers such as PlayStation, Xbox, joysticks, and etc. 25 games are included such as Worms, Stunt Car Racer, Zool, California Games, and more ROMs can be downloaded using the USB floppy disk. Wireless connectivity such as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. The console itself is manufactured by Retro Games with dimensions of 10 by 7 by 3 inches at 2.2 pounds and not only emulates A500 games but 600 and 1200 titles and features save and resume functions. The console made its worldwide release on the 25th of March 2022. This would mark the 35th anniversary for the PC release. Got the Amiga's user interface. Now the layout is very similar to the NES and SNES classic consoles. You got the game's library with a brief description and illustrations. You're also treated to some very stock music. It kind of sucks, but it's a one-up on the PlayStation Classic at least. A few settings that can be adjusted such as filters, sound options, refresh rate, etc. Pretty decent. Let's check out a game. Zool, Ninja of the Ninth Dimension is a 1992 platforming game it's developed and published by Gremlin Graphics and was marketed as a rival to Sega's Sonic the Hedgehog and Nintendo Super Mario. The game is known for its extreme product placement of the lollipops, Chubba Chubs. Let's check it out. So far, the A500 is a beast. Again, I'm not a wizard when it comes to game emulation, but this runs pretty solid and definitely on par with the original titles. This is just a basic platformer. There's actually a disturbing story behind this game. You see, back in 2004, Zoo Digital Publishing attempted a remake of the title. They worked closely with one of the worst developers to ever exist, Data Designs, a shovelware company that flooded the Nintendo Wii's library with absolute garbage. Y'all ever heard Ninja Breadman? No? How about Trixie in Toyland? They're exactly the same game. Trash. Those games were made using the lowest of low budgets and used an engine that's designed for asset swapping and resulted in rushed crappy titles that were all about quantity over quality. Here's a common example. DD, the company, released another game one day after Ninja Breadman, Anubis 2, and it's exactly the same game. Surprisingly, you'd think a company like that would go bankrupt, but no, quite the opposite. I believe at one stage, Data Designs owned more than half the shovelware that was being sold, especially in Europe. The reason? Well, it was about a quarter of the price of a AAA title. Nevertheless, I'm getting a bit off topic here. Zool runs fine. We'll try a different game. Worms, a director's cut, is an artillery strategy game. It's developed by Team 17 and published by Ocean Software and was programmed by Andy Davidson and was released exclusively for the Amiga platform in 1997. Love me some worms. This version is one of the best. The director's cut generates landscapes and ranges of styles such as beach and snow, and a level designer which allows the player to design their own battlefields. Despite the positive reviews, the director's cut only sold 5,000 copies worldwide, which makes this game kinda rare. This game utilizes a mouse peripheral, and well, it's definitely functional. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. You also need a working keyboard to play this game. But again, no dramas here. Watch this. Overall, a great game. Watch this. this looks decent. Alien Breed 3D is a first-person shooter that's developed by Team 17, released in 1995, and was followed up with the sequel, Alien Breed 2, The Killing Grounds, in 1996. Let's check it out. This game looks a bit rough, but runs great. The developers have clearly taken heavy inspiration from the team at id Software, John Romero, Tom Hall, and some of their titles, like Wolfenstein, Doom, and Duke Nukem. 
However, this game has maps with varying depths, platforms and floors, and it's something that the Doom engine was not capable of. Apart from the tank controls, this game's not too bad. We'll give it a pass. California Games is a 1987 sports video game. It's developed and published by Epic's Westwood Associates and was originally released for the Apple II, Commodore 64, and was ported to other home computers and video game consoles. Let's check it out. I've actually never played this one. Very similar to EA's Skate or Die that was released in the same year. This game is way better with more events to compete in. As far as the controls, yeah, not too bad. The D-pad is a little bit mushy, but apart from that, it's definitely a premium controller. What the hell do we do here? Oh, I see. Tacky sack. Bit different. It's actually alright. Ah. Bit of surfing. Pretty rad. Again, no issues at all with this game. One's fine. I absolutely love this console. We'll check out one more game. Stunt Car Racer, or if you live in America, Stunt Track Racer is a 1989 racing video game. It's developed and published by MicroStyle and MicroPlay for the US that was released for the Commodore 64, Atari ST, DOS, ZX Spectrum, and the Amstrad CPC. Let's check it out. This is fast, man! Whoa. So this tile is a little different. The game uses elevator racetracks and circuits, with cosmetic damage that can occur when the player leans too hard on the track, over crests, walls, and is indicated by a crack in the frame at the top of the windscreen. You also find that the Commodore 64 version uses 3D vector graphics and looks brilliant. Jesus Christ, we're flying at 170 miles an hour! This is crazy! Yeah! This is one sick game! Never played this before, and I'm already hooked on it! Can't beat it! Oh. Overall, the Amiga 500 is definitely worth your time, and is a great system if you're into retro gaming. I'd have to say this is way better than the NES, PlayStation, and Mega Drive Classic consoles, and the emulation is right on the mark. If you see one of these out in the wild, definitely get your hands on it. I'm Beers Pizzas, and I'm out of here.